Let's look at the function f of x equals 1 half x squared. Here's a graph of this function. It's a parabola. And we can calculate the derivative at any point a using the formula f prime of a equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And before we do that, let's just take a look at what we imagine uh, the derivative might be at several different points. So for example, at negative 3 and at negative 2 and at negative 1, we see that um, a tangent line at each of those points would have a negative slope. So we'd expect a negative number uh, when we calculated the derivative at these points. At 0, we would expect, well, it looks like the tangent line would be a flat line. And the slope of a horizontal line is 0. So we would expect to get 0 when we calculate the derivative at 0. And then for points like 1, 2, and 3, we would expect to get a positive number because the tangent line would look like it would have a positive slope uh, at each of these three places. So let's actually calculate it. So we're going to use the formula right here. So f prime of a should equal the limit as h approaches 0 of, and we have f of a plus h. That's going to be 1 half of a plus h squared minus f of a, so that's going to be 1 half a squared all over h. Okay, and so that's the same thing as the limit as h approaches 0 of, and so I have a 1 half and a 1 half that I can factor outside. In fact, I can make that a 1 over 2h. And then I would have a plus h squared. So let's uh, write that as a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. And then I would have a minus a squared because I factored that 1 half out already. So that would be minus a squared. Okay. And I see that the a squareds are going to cancel here. So that leaves me with the limit as h approaches 0 of, and I guess I'll put the 2h on the bottom again here so we can see what happens. And then on the top, I have 2ah plus h squared. And now you can see that the h's are going to cancel. So I'm going to get the limit as h approaches 0 of, and so I'm going to have 2a plus h all over 2. And now I can actually do the limit. I can let h go to 0, and I end up getting 2a over 2, which is just the same thing as a. So I see that the derivative at point a is a. So does that make sense? Well, if I were to look at several different points here, I could actually calculate what that would look like at all those different points. So maybe we should actually test it out at a few points just to make sure that it works. So here is the formula we just found that f prime of a equals a. And let's look at a little chart here. We'll look at several different values of a and look at f prime of a and see if it makes sense. So how about at negative 3? Well, f prime of a equals a, so it's just negative 3. So that would mean that the slope of the tangent line here at negative 3, I mean something like this, it's a little hard to draw, but something like that would have a slope of negative 3. Okay, that makes sense. How about negative 2? Then that would be negative 2. And so that slope would have, that line would have a slope of negative 2. Negative 1 and negative 1. So it looks like it is getting a, a little shallower here. And then 0, it would be 0. Well, we knew that that should be a flat line right there. 1 is has a slope of 1. So if I were to draw a tangent line right here, that would have a slope of 1. 2, at 2 it should have a slope of 2. And then at 3 it should have a slope of 3. Okay, so it looks like this makes sense. Now we've chosen some very uh, specific points here, but why not look at all of the points? So to look at all of the points, Here's our function again, and here's the graph. Well, if I have f prime of a equaling a, it's not that far of a leap to say that maybe f prime of x is equal to x for any value of x. In that case, then, we would get a derivative function that would look something like this. And so 
we can kind of match this up with the original graph. If we look at, say, negative 1, here we had a tangent line with a slope of negative 1, and we have a value of negative 1 here at negative 1. And it's 0, 0 here, meaning that at 0, the tangent line has a slope of 0. And then to pick just one more point, how about 2? We knew that the tangent line here had a slope of 2, and so we see that we have a point 2 comma 2 right here. So this graph is actually giving us the slope of the tangent line at any point x that we want to pick on this graph of the parabola. So that leads us to the following definition. Given a function f, the derivative of f, denoted by f prime, is given by f prime of x equaling the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, where the domain of f prime consists of all values of x in the domain of f for which the limit exists. So we saw that when we looked at this definition here, that really all that we did was just replace the a with an x, and then that gave us our derivative function. We also know that we have an alternate way of writing the derivative at a point a, something that looks like this. So do we just take the a and replace it with an x? Well, in that case, we get something that doesn't quite make sense. We have the limit as x approaches x, of, well, it just has a bunch of x's, and that's not very good. So we don't want that. So instead, we have to kind of pick a dummy variable. So I'm going to pick w. You can pick any letter. I just happen to pick w. And so in that case, we could rewrite the alternate definition as f prime of x equaling the limit as w approaches x of f of w minus f of x all over w minus x. So let's look at that alternate definition for the function f of x equaling x cubed minus x. And so here's the alternate definition, and here is a graph of this function. So we see that this function uh, has uh, some little curves in it here, and so before we actually calculate the derivative function, let's try and get an idea of what it might look like. So we can see that we have a horizontal tangent line, looks like right here, and another one right here. So we'd expect that the derivative function would be zero at these points. And then over here, we see that we have what well, looks like something that would be a positively sloped tangent line on this part over here. And then in between here, it looks like a negatively sloped tangent line. And then here, it looks like a positively so sloped tangent line again. I'll put a circle around these two distinguish them from the uh, horizontal tangent lines here. Okay, so let's use the alternate definition. So f prime of x would be the limit as w approaches x of, and now we have f of w, so f of w would be w cubed minus w, and then we have minus f of x, well f of x is just x cubed minus x, and then we have all this over w minus x. All right, uh, what is this going to be? So I think if I look at this here, I can factor a w out of the first term here. So I have a w squared minus 1. And then I can factor an x out of this. So I get an x squared minus 1 all over w minus x. And now uh, let's see, what can I do with the remaining part? Well. I have a w squared minus 1 and an x squared minus 1. Hmm, well, there's not much I can do with those other than using difference at two squares. That's going to give me a w plus 1 and a w minus 1 here. And that's going to give me an x plus 1 and an x minus 1 here. And I want something that's going to cancel out with this w minus x downstairs here. So maybe that's not the best way to go about doing this. Instead, I'm going, to, I'm going to try something else. So let's not go with this approach here of factoring out the w and the x right away, and we'll try something else instead. So I'm going to go back up here. How about instead, if, how about I group the cubes together? So I have w cubed minus x cubed. So I'll group that together. And then what else would I have? Well, I, have, I would have a negative w and a positive x left over. So I could write this like this, okay, and then I have a w minus x down here. 
This is a difference of two cubes, and a difference of two cubes does actually factor. So now I'm going to go over to here. And so I see that I have the limit as w minus x of, and then how does w cubed minus x cubed factor? Well, it factors with a w minus x term out front. And then what's left over? Well, if you're not sure, you can always go and look this up. You can look online or look in a textbook somewhere, uh, or if you just happen to remember that we end up getting something that looks like this. We get a w squared, and then we get wx, and then we get an x squared. And then we still have a w minus x here, and then this is all over w minus x. Great. Now I can cancel out the w minus x's everywhere. So if I do that, I get the limit as w approaches x of, and this is going to be w squared plus wx plus x squared, and then I'm going to have a minus 1 here because when I cancel this w minus x here, it's going to leave behind a 1. And now I can actually do the limit. So if I do the limit here, all of the w's are approaching x's, so this is going to become an x squared plus, and then an x times an x, that's going to be another x squared, and then another x squared, and then a minus 1. And so that's going to be 3x squared minus 1. Okay, so just to summarize that, f prime of x is 3x squared minus 1. Here's a graph of 3x squared minus 1, and you can see that it does have the features that we expect, namely that we should have something that's 0 about here, and that's this point right here is our 0, and then we have another one over here where it's 0. We saw it was negative in between, and the graph is negative in between, and then it was positive on either side. So it's positive above the x-axis on either side. So you can see that the derivative function actually tells us a great deal of information. It tells us the derivative at any point x that we're interested in, provided, of course, that this limit exists.